your story might sound a little bit similar to mine, where at first I was enamored and captured with some intricate looking 3D printed miniatures um, and went straight out and bought myself a Mono X 3D resin printer. And from there, wasn't long before I discovered Leachy Slicer and for the last three, three and a half years, that's been my go-to slicer for my resin printing. About a year or so into my journey, I discovered some of the awesome terrain pieces, uh, dice towers and larger pieces um, that were up for offer. And with the price of resin where it was, I decided to look into FDM printing and got myself my first FDM printer. Thinking it would be a rather simple process, the resin printing had been pretty easy up to this point. Um, but no, the amount of options, tweaking, calibrating, test files you need to do to sort out your FDM printer to get good prints uh, is quite mind-boggling. I did get my head around it and have since been using about three different slices to get through my FDM printing. Now, thanks to the great guys at Leechy Slicer who have given me a pro license to check out this FDM module, um, we can do all of our 3D printing with the one slicer. So let's jump to the computer and have a quick look. Now, if you're a resin printer, uh, this screen is very familiar looking. This is Leechy Slicer. Um, I have the Pro Edition, which I've had for the last three years or so. Looks very familiar. Um, now, if we go, we can see this orange FDM printer. And if we were to add one, we can add a 3D printer here. I think it's something like 300 models that are supported. Uh, they've got just about every make you can think of. And really simply, you can do a search just based off the model. There we go, all the Cobras come up without scrolling through everything. There's my Cobra 2 Plus. You can add it from there. Um, so go to the Cobra 2 Plus. You can see the screen looks almost the same, uh, but we have filament up here. Uh, this looks very familiar, typical lychee layout, but we have filament here. And here's where we can set our filament settings as such. This would be your base settings that will be loaded every time you load this filament in. These are your standard settings that it will use. As you can see here, we have an amazing visual representation for all of the settings. Uh, which would have made the learning curve a lot easier coming from resin to FDM, having some visual representation rather than just a list of parameters and some settings. So here we can see the extruder, retraction, got our layers, the wall, our infill pattern, that first layer, filament, temperature, supports, skirt. So that's the overview. We can go even further into these settings now. A retractor since again totally different pictures to show it even more intricately uh, put our retraction and check speed yeah, nozzle work. so if you were to use a description of what these settings are if you're really just learning hand in hand with these pictures definitely not as daunting a task first layers yeah, really good representation. So layer height, adaptive layer heights, which will give us that smoother top to all of our models. Starting positions. So I've got access to tweak a lot of settings and a lot of calibration here. Again, really great visual representation. We do have our hover for even more description. So yeah, any of these settings we can hover over and get a more in-depth description as well. Speed again, I'm keeping everything pretty standard for this. So yeah, we can really tweak a lot and it just keeps on coming. To 
just think this visual representation is so good. So there we have it. So you can really set up your printer to begin with, with this um, standard settings. And it had a really easy model to begin with. Nice and simple, no supports needed for this. I will load another model in so we can check out the support side of things. Um, just want to get an idea of how well it prints a simple structure. So again, being Leachy Slicer, I mean, this is exactly the same as the resin side of things. So if you use Leachy with the resin printing, um, this will seem very familiar. And jump to the prepare side of things. So that's where we would do our supports. Yeah, very much just like the resin side of things. Got support painting. And if you're curious of how some of these settings work with the supports with the resin side of things, I have done a video on that. Uh, I'll leave a link at the end so you can check that one out. And here, so once you've set up those initial settings with your filament, uh, those are going to be your main settings. Here we can do overrides. So if you need to adjust some of them for a particular print on the go, without going and changing those standardized settings, we can override them here. And again, we've got access to layer height, our infill pattern. Yeah, we've got a few patterns here, phase printing. density so we can still do again I've got these pictures to show you exactly what they're doing adhesion so I like that the picture changes with your selection that's great so yeah, yeah we can really do those overrides we can do a shield it looks like a draft shield Fill. Right, and exports, and just like in the resin side of things, we can check out that at scale, which I really like. Here we go, and we will export that to G code. Here we go, that's exporting. Now I'll go find a small file so we can load something in and check out the support side of things. And once this has sliced and rendered, here we go. And our slice looks good. As this is the first time trying the supports with uh, Leechy with the FDM side of things, I'm going to keep it to a very small file uh, just in case the support removal doesn't go too well then I haven't ruined a five hour six hour model um, so we can see I've loaded in the key ring it's pretty small that's my build volume you can see here and it's taking a bugger all and done it in two pieces uh, one I'm leaving on the bed one I've raised and if we jump to the prepare side of things jump to the supports here I am going to do this at slice, uh, let it generate its own supports at, uh, as we slice the file. And I'm just going to leave everything standard, uh, see how that comes out. Um, you can, of course, do the manual supports, uh, highlight a piece, you know, change our supports. We could generate automatic supports here if we wanted to, and then we could add some manually if we think we needed to add some more or adjust them. Uh, but we're going to leave that at slice uh, nice and easy. Run that to export and export that to file. So I'm going to get both of these models loaded onto the printer. I get them printed out and we will check out the final results. Um, at this point, everything seemed to go well with the slicing. Um, 27 minutes, this will be a pretty quick print. Awesome. And we've got all that layer representation, some supports. 
course these are cube supports um, previously I have not had fun times removing cube supports but these look all right to be honest lately I have been using organic supports um, so I'll be interested to see how well these remove if all of this goes well I might look at a future video where we look at a more complex bigger uh, FDM piece. I've got a heap of terrain pieces I need to print off. I think I'll be pretty happy using this for my FDM print. Anyway, let's check out the final product. So we've had these prints come off the printer. Uh, here we have support at the back here. Tiny, tiny bit of stringing. And the jaw that was supported. All the supports came off pretty easy. Not too bad. Supports came off surprisingly easy. I say surprisingly easy because I've never had good support <laughs> supports coming off when they've been cubic. Uh, that's really good. And that's true. Came out fine. Good smooth top layer. It did have ironing on, so it did iron. Great, no complaints. All in all, a great beginner's slicer. Uh, if you're new to FDM printing, you haven't got your head around all of the calibration and settings that you can change and tweak with your FDM printer, um, this will really help you through that process with all of the visual representation with the pictures. Um, I really like that the picture changed and updated as we made setting changes. So as we changed it from raft to a brim, uh, it was reflected in the picture as well. So I think you'll find this really easy to learn from. Um, again, if you are new to FDM, but you're coming from resin printing and have used Leachy Slicer, no brainer. Um, layout is exactly the same. You'll get your head around the settings very easy. You'll have no trouble. As far as functionality, um, with the settings you can change, uh, it covered just about everything I could think of needing to change. Um, we saw some really cool things with the adaptive top layer, uh, where we can make it smaller and smaller as we get to that top layer. Um, draft shield, uh, I hadn't seen that before, um, so that's something I will have to investigate. But this is definitely something I'll consider using for my FDM. I have a heap of terrain pieces to print coming up, so I will be trying some of those other settings and tweaks. Um, just to see what we can really get out of it. So if you think you'd be interested in seeing some videos down the track with the Leechy FDM, let me know. So if you don't want to miss those videos uh, as they come out, hit the subscribe button, join up with my little community. Um, if you'd like to see a video that dives into the basics of supports in Leechy Resin, then check out this video here. Uh, it will apply to some of the FDM features as well. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.